Okay. Good morning to everyone. It's a special day, special treat. Let me introduce the people who are with us today. Uh, first, we have from my far right, Dr. Howard Zucker, Health Commissioner for the State of New York. Uh, then we have Mr. Andy Cohen, who is the Vice Chairman of the New York Mets. Al Leiter, pleasure to be with Al. Uh, big fan of Al's, former pitcher, New York Mets. Uh, really a, a superstar, and it's just a, a real thrill and for me to be with him. <laughs> and New York man. <laughs> Randy doesn't let anything get by. <laughs> CC Sabathia, God bless you. Pleasure to be with you, former uh, Yankees great, great pitcher, and it's just an honor to be with you. Randy Levine, who is the president of the New York Yankees, been a great New Yorker, been so supportive on so many different levels. Kelly Cummings we have, who's the Director of Operations for us uh, and has been running many of the uh, state operations during COVID, which have been extraordinarily uh, challenging, obviously. We have special guests in the audience. We have uh, Susie Cohen, pleasure to be with you, Susie, who can photograph and wave at the same time, which is very impressive. Uh, and we have my daughter, Michaela, who is a big baseball fan and a New York baseball fan, okay? I'm a New York baseball fan. I'll tell you how we work this out, all right? This is how we work this out. Uh, we, New, Michaela, myself, we support New York teams, all right? I'm a Queens boy, grew up behind what was called Shea Stadium at the time with those, uh, those blue and orange uh, sidings that used to flap in the wind. I could ride my bicycle to Shea Stadium uh, for the Mets. First ball game my father takes me to, and my father was, was a ball player himself, played on the farm team for the Pittsburgh uh, Pirates. First ball game I went to, New York Yankees, uh, Mickey Mantle. So uh, I support New York. This is the perfect mask, okay? You have the Mets when you're at a Mets game, you turn it around, you have the Yankees when you're at a Yankees game. So uh, we support both. Let me go through a couple of facts uh, today. Go good news on COVID. Uh, overall, the statewide positivity rate is down to 2.8%, and that is great news. Uh, we still lost 57 New Yorkers yesterday, and they are in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, but the numbers are dramatically on the decline. Statewide hospitalizations are down 88, uh, down to 4,500. Uh, the ICUs are down 20. The intubations are down 11. This gives you an idea of where we've gone over the past few weeks. When the holiday surge started, right, which we talked about and we anticipated. Uh, we talked about Thanksgiving. We talked about Hanukkah. We talked about Christmas. We talked about Kwanzaa. We talked about increased socialization. You're going to see the number go up. The number went up. Peaks about January 4th, right after New Year's, right after the holidays. We were at 7.9 percent. We are now down to 3.2 percent. So we are lower today than we were before the surge even started. You look at the number of hospitalizations, it tells you the same story. Just before the holiday surge, we were at about 6,000. We then went up to close to 9,000 after the holidays, and we're now down to 4,500. So all the numbers are headed in the right directions. Uh, while COVID's coming down, Vaccinations are going up. Vaccinate, 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 vaccinate. Uh, and I want to thank both the Yankees and the Mets for their help in uh, setting up vaccination sites. It is about getting people vaccinated. The vaccine is now coming in. It's going to come in in large quantities over the next several weeks. And then it's just going to be a logistical operation like you've never seen. Uh, to get millions of doses in people's arms. But the good news is it's working. We've done 7 million total doses so far. 2 million New Yorkers are fully vaccinated. Uh, 4,700 have at least the first vaccine. 
I got my first vaccine yesterday. I took the Johnson & Johnson vaccine yesterday. I took J&J. &J. First of all, it's only one shot. You don't have to go back twice. Uh, it doesn't require the super cold storage. It's easier to handle. And I took J&J &J purposely because I want New Yorkers to know, first of all, it's safe, right? Second of all, take any vaccine you can get. Should I get Pfizer? Should I get Moderna? Should I get this one? Take any vaccine you can get because they all work. Uh, and we're going to have more Johnson & Johnson coming because that's going to be the highest production level and they're the easiest to administer. It is night and day between doing one dose and then doing two doses and having to schedule a person to come back and coordinate. Uh, so I took J&J. &J. It works and it's simpler. Uh, but that's on the way up. But people have to take the vaccine. We can acquire it. We can set up all these mass vaccination sites. People have to put the needle in their arm. They have to show up. I took it yesterday. I'm ready. You want arm wrestle? <laughs> what do you have? What do you have? I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready. oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm here. Uh, I felt fine. I feel fine. Uh, maybe you lost my mind a little bit as you see, as you see, see the arm wrestle, but people have to do their part. Uh, go to the website, make the phone call, set up your appointment. So COVID's coming down. Vaccine rates are going up. Start to look to the future aggressively. And let's get back to life and living and get that economy running because it is safe. It is safe. New York has always been smart and safe all through this. Remember, we went from the highest infection rate in the United States of America to the lowest infection rate in the United States of America. We have beaten this virus like no other state in the nation has, and we've done it by being smart. Dr. Zucker, our health commissioner, smart. The calibration is right, but follow the science, follow the data, follow the numbers. The numbers are coming down. We have to start to move forward. Sports travel. Currently, travel for sports is limited to contiguous counties and regions. Starting next Monday, March 29th, statewide travel for sports and recreational activities will be performed, okay? Second, outdoor performing arts. Starting April 1, 2,500 plus capacity venues, live concerts, shows can open at 20% capacity. As the COVID rates continue to improve, the capacity will continue to increase. So this is our starting point. Uh, but as those numbers keep coming down, which we believe they will, you'll see the capacity numbers go up. We did a demonstration program when the Buffalo Bills uh, were in the playoffs. It was the first in the nation ever done. Uh, we opened up the uh, Buffalo Bills Stadium uh, we did testing. It worked extraordinarily well. Uh, we started with 10%. Uh, it was a great demonstration. We're now going to move forward. April 1, sports venues with 1,500 plus indoor or 2,500 plus outdoor capacity. Indoor will do 10% capacity. Outdoor will do 20% capacity. Uh, we'll have uh, testing required uh, when we open. If you get your vaccine, uh, that's, uh, I have my card. I can go to a game as soon as it opens. You can take a rapid test. You can take a PCR test. But we're going to have testing as a precaution. As time moves on and as our experience grows and we see uh, how the games work, we then right away do what's called uh, contact tracing, where we follow up on the game to see if anybody got infected, et cetera. Uh, and I think you're going to see the capacity increase and the testing requirements decrease as we get more evidence. Uh, but we want to start uh, safe and smart. That means City Field, uh, 8,384 fans. Yankee Stadium, 10,850 fans. Uh, the crowd makes the ball game, said Tide Cobb. 
Uh, I believe that. We went through that with the Buffalo Bills. They said it was a totally different experience when you have the crowd and you have the noise and you have the people cheering. Uh, so uh, we're going to play ball, and we're going to play ball uh, with a crowd, uh, which I tell you is just so good for the psyche. I was talking to Michaela about it on the way here this morning. Getting out of the house, getting out of the apartment, getting out of this entrapment that we've been in, and going to a game and getting outside and seeing a new season start uh, and just uh, hope springs eternal, right? It's the beginning of the season. We're going to win. Uh, it's going to be better than next year. So uh, I feel great about it. The Yankees' home opener is April 1, April 8th, Mets' home op opener. The Yankees take on the Blue Jays. Mets take on the Miami Marlins. Uh, but I'm very excited about the news today. It has been a long, dark winter. It's been a long, dark year. Uh, it's been the darkest experience we've gone through in generations. Let's be honest. Uh, you'd have to go back to World War II to have had an experience uh, of this magnitude and this depth, right? Uh, and it's been... It's been difficult on a lot of levels. People talk about the disease and the economic. It's been mentally uh, debilitating. It's been socially debilitating. It's been depressing. It's been hard on families. The emotional toll that this has taken on people, I don't think we're going to begin to understand this for months. I don't think we're going to be, uh, begin to understand uh, what it's done to children who lost a year of school in some cases, a year of socialization, uh, families who are cooped up in small quarters. It has been hellacious, hellacious. Uh, but it's coming to an end. It's coming to an end. Spring is upon us, right? Uh, seasons change. Times change. Spring is upon us. Uh, and spring is a new season, and it is a new attitude, and that's where we are. And we have to start thinking spring. We have to start thinking about reopening New York and rebuilding New York and relaunching New York and reimagining New York and reuniting New York and those social bounds uh, that, that connect us and that we thrive on. How do we renew New York? We're not just going to rebuild what was there before. Now's an opportunity to build back better, right? When you go through a tough situation in life, what do you do? You learn from it, and you get up better, and you get up stronger. That's what we have to do. We've done it before as New Yorkers. We went through 9-11. I remember during 9-11, all the naysayers. Remember all the people after 9-11? Oh, New York will never be the same. We're a terrorist target. Nobody will come back. I heard the naysayers before. I hear them today. I'm worried about New York City. I'm worried about the crime and the homeless. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. Nobody is stronger than New Yorkers. Nobody is more resilient than New Yorkers. Nobody bounces back like New Yorkers. Did we get through 9-11? We got through 9-11, and we are the stronger for it. We didn't rebuild. We rebuilt better than before. Are we going to get through COVID? We're getting through COVID, and we're going to be the better for it and the smarter for it and the more united for it. And our success through COVID and what we did as a community in this state coming together is going to make our connection stronger and our fabric of community stronger. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And that's where we are. Spring is here. It is time to rise up. And it is time for the Mets and the Yankees to bring home a championship this year. And we say play ball. With that, let me turn it over to Cece Sabathia. Uh, CC, thank you for being with us, and why don't you take the first remarks? Thank you. Thanks, Governor. Um, I'm excited to be here um, on this day that we're announcing that there are going to be fans back in the stands. Um, 
I grew up on the West Coast, but I consider myself a New Yorker now. And, you know, dealing with this COVID the past year, my family battling it, you know, us being, you know, kind of stuck in the house, not being able to go to games, do things that we're normally used to, used to doing. Um, we're excited to be able to get out. And as a fan now, being able to be into the, in the stadium, um, cheering on the Yankees, um, you know, I'm just excited. So, uh, you know, like, like, like the governor said, um, you know, continue to get vaccinated, do the right things, and, and uh, let's continue to battle this thing so by the end of the season we can have a full stadium for the World Series. Yeah. Uh, now to Mr. Al Leiter, as you know, former pitcher, former Met, Former Yankee, uh, did we forget? Uh, but a World Series champion, uh, and uh, just he's yeah. been a great supporter for New York, for New Jersey, for the whole metropolitan region. Whatever we've needed, uh, Al has been there. So it's a pleasure to thank be you. with you, Al. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here um, for a lot of reasons, and uh, listen to your daughter and, and seeing your your mask with both sides. I, I am I am one of the few players that played for both the, the Yankees and the Mets, and the and the the, uh, the awkwardness of it all was that I grew up a Mets fan as a result of my father being a Mets fan because of Casey Stengel at inception in 1962. He loved the whole lovable losers. The lighter boys were all uh, Mets fans. My dad was. I grew up in Long Island. I grew up in New Jersey. I get drafted by the Yankees three years later out of high school and pitching in Yankee Stadium. So the, the, the coincidence or irony of all of that, and then years later, I get a chance to play for a team I rooted for as a kid. So I get the whole Pledge of Allegiance. I get the whole two hats. I was here in 2000, and I thought it was a, a, a thrill, even though the Mets, we lost, to play the Yankees in a true Subway uh, World Series was something that I'll never forget. Again, I wish we won. Um, and then fast forward, I was able to finish my career with the Yankees. So I, I, I got the whole two-sided thing, and I, I got it. As my friend Michael K says, he says I'm a fraud as a fan because I like baseball. <laughs> and, you know, CC was with the Brewers and the Indians, and now he's going to the Hall of Fame, by the way, folks, as, as a Yankee. Uh, it's difficult to really relate to the fanaticism of where you pledge your allegiance as a result of being a baseball player. But I'm a fan. So that 2000, when we were playing it and went down to City Hall and we were wearing the hats yeah, and all yeah, that, yeah. that was fun. But I see this in relation to, not as tragic with what transpired in 9-11, in, uh, but I was also with the Mets when we came back. We were the first team in New York to play the infamous Mike Piazza home run. Um, the, how scared we were and nervous. And as you said, Governor, about, you know, would we ever rebuild and we ever come back? Well, of course we did. Um, but I remember what baseball meant, and we weren't sure, and Randy, you know, you can attest to it, having been in baseball a long time, uh, as well as CeCe, about whether it was the right thing to come back after, after the heinous tragedy of, of uh, the World Trade Center in 9-11. And I'll tell you, folks, the, the fact that we did, and when we did, and wearing those hats of all the respective uh, first responders, and knowing how special it was as players at the time to be carrying the baton as a Major League Baseball player and being in New York City, it was the right thing. Governor, I'm happy. Uh, now I, I, I did some broadcasts for the late George Steinberg. gave me a chance to do some Yankee games, watching CC do his Hall of Fame career. Uh, I do some things with Andy and the Mets. Um, and I'm just thrilled that fans will get a chance to get back in the stadium. I'm sure, as, as the governor said, it will progress uh, to where more people can go. And there's no doubt about it. When you play in front of a big crowd and they're cheering you or booing you, <laughs> the Bronx <laughs> cheer, man, there's nothing like it. And there's no better place than New York, really, really. And thank you for, uh, for inviting me here because uh, play ball, man. It's opening day. No better place than New York and New York sports fans. Here, here. Beautifully said. Let's give Al a round of applause. <laughs> Uh, Randy Levine, who is uh, the quintessential New Yorker, uh, he's uh, head of the Yankees organization, but he's been uh, in government, he's been in civic society. Uh, he's seen it all, Randy. He really has, um, from every angle. And I have to tell you, whatever New York needs, uh, Randy's always been there. What, however extraordinary the request, uh, however bizarre or difficult, uh, the request. Uh, Randy's always there. So thank you again. And great to be, uh, great to have you here, Randy. And thank you very much. And we're rooting for you. Uh, and I'm excited to see the season start. 
And as Al said, I think it really is spring, the weather changes, uh, it's a whole new look at life and at New York, and uh, playing ball is part of it. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, Dr. Zerk. I just want to say, Governor, throughout this uh, entire ordeal, uh, from the time we started until we had spring training here last year and then through the season, thank you because you and Dr. Zucker were great partners, great leaders. Uh, you listened to us. You accepted our ideas, and we collaborated in order to get a baseball season in last year in a safe way, and uh, thank you for that. And this is incredibly exciting now. Uh, as, as everybody said, first off, we have two of the great pitchers and great human beings of Major League Baseball in CC and Al. I mean, everybody in the game, and our fans will tell you, not only uh, are they both, you know, some of the greatest pitchers uh, of all time, no hitters, Cy Young Awards, everything, but they're two of the most quality people uh, that there are. So we're all lucky that they're here with us today and, and uh, we're associated uh, with them. Also want to thank Andy, uh, the Mets and the Yankees. Um, might surprise some of our fans, but we have a great collaborative. You know, we want to kill each other on the field, but <laughs> on the business side and this stuff, we have a great partnership. So on behalf of Hal Steinbrenner and the Steinbrenner family, I want to thank you and thank the Mets for working with us uh, in order to, uh, to get things done. Um, you mentioned the Vaccine Center, uh, which has been a great success. Uh, and we're going to keep the vaccine center open while the season is going. And we're going to work it because that, in our opinion, is bigger than baseball. And, and, and thank you for that. Uh, Yankee Stadium is ready. It's uh, the International uh, Well Building Institute said Yankee Stadium is the most healthy, safest stadium in the world. Um, we've done everything we possibly can. Our staff has just been tremendous, led by uh, Doug Behar. Uh, our stadium operations uh, uh, executive. Uh, I mean, it's going to be safe uh, thanks to, to your people. They came down there, the whole health department, they reviewed it, and it's going to be great. We promise you, and we promise we're going to do everything we can to keep our fans safe because that's the most in, important thing. But this is just so wonderful because to me, opening day, like you all said, spring, it's hope. Everybody starts even. Everybody wants to go to the World Series. It's the end of cold winter. Our fans are really hungry for this, really, really hungry for this. And uh, we got two great teams. Hopefully, if they all stay healthy, uh, or maybe we have a Subway Series. Uh, and uh, so thank you for all, Governor. Thank you for all, Dr. Zucker. And uh, let's play ball. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, I have the mask for the uh, Subway Series. I'm ready. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Andy Cohen, the Vice Chairman of the Mets, uh, congratulations on the acquisition and uh, taking over the Mets. We're all very excited. Uh, it's, it's great to hear Randy talk about how you can have both a rivalry uh, but a commonality. Frankly, I wish we had more of that in politics, <laughs> you know, where you can have a difference of opinion. Uh, but you, ha you can share a commonality and a decency, and we have that, we have that here because uh, we are New Yorkers, and that's how we treat each other. But thank you. Thank you very much, Andy Cohen, for being here today. Thank you very much, Governor. And, uh, and on behalf of Steve and myself, thank you, Dr. Zucker uh, and the Yankees organization. Randy uh, has been terrific, especially as we coordinated uh, over these last important ones, and we'll continue to coordinate uh, so we can do the best we can for all the fans. Uh, I don't want to start any trouble. Uh, CC is very big in person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that he <But> is. <laughs> I don't want to start any trouble with my good friends from the Bronx, but I'm very happy our governor is a Mets fan. <laughs> uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today with you representing the Mets. Uh, we're excited, uh, very excited, as are I'm sure all New Yorkers, uh, that New York is opening up more and more each day. Uh, we're excited about the season ahead and welcoming fans safely back to City Field um, uh, in April. Uh, it's another step forward for our hometown, for New York State, and for the tri-state area. Um, so all of us at the Mets, thank you, Governor, uh, for your efforts, those of Dr. Zucker uh, and the New York State Department of Health. Uh, 
we're looking forward to reopening the ballpark in accordance with all government uh, prescribed mandates. Uh, and just want to thank you again and see you soon at City Field. I'll be there. I'll be there. So let's start. Uh, as we said before, this is a process. It's an intelligent calibration of reopening the economy, watching the science, watching the data. Uh, but all indicators are good. I believe this is our the opening position. I believe we're going to see success in the games. I think we're going to see that they're safe. Uh, and I think you're going to see uh, increased capacity uh, and uh, more flexibility across the board uh, as we're going forward. And that's only because we have been smart. Last, last point, I promise. My daughter's giving me a look like, I want to go now. I get it. <laughs> the, COVID, when you look at COVID across the state, across the country, it is very different in very different places. It is totally different rates of infection because it is a pure function of how that community behaves. There's no secret to this. It's a virus. And if you're reckless, you will transmit it. It's just like having uh, a child who has a virus at home. And if that, that child walks around the house, you get a household full of infection. And you can see different parts of the state, different parts of this country, very different infection rates. It's about being smart. The mask, the social distancing, get vaccinated, keep those numbers going down, keep reopening and reopening better than ever before. And let's play ball. Thank you very much for being here, my friends. Thank you. Thank you all.